Hello beautiful, I am so excited to have you today. We are going to talk about how to be your happiest, your hottest, and your healthiest in or out of a relationship. I'm very excited to have you. Everyone who's watching live, welcome. I'm so happy you're here. We're gonna chat for a bit and then I will take all of your questions at the end. So the reason why this topic came to mind today is because there's something going viral on TikTok known as boyfriend air. And I'm gonna explain it, so don't worry if you don't know what it means. Boyfriend air, it is the idea that after you get into a relationship and you spend a lot of time with your boyfriend, your appearance, your health, your body starts to downgrade. And what a lot of people think happens is that your hygiene is affected by your boyfriend's apartment or house or just being around him. What a lot of girls will say is that they all of a sudden start to have skin issues, they don't smell as good, their hair is greasy. What is actually happening here is so different than what people believe boyfriend air is doing. And there's two thoughts that I have on this and then I'm going to teach you how to bounce back if you're in a relationship and level up your life again. To again be your hottest, your healthiest, and your happiest. So my first thought on this, and it comes from my friend Michelle Diaz on TikTok. She says if you are with a man who is downgrading your life, meaning he is adding more stress, he is not providing for you, he's not protecting you, he is literally just pulling you down, you are going to experience the side effects of boyfriend air. Your skin is going to break out from the stress, you're not going to feel motivated in any area of your life, you will become a downgraded version of yourself if you are with the wrong man. And I do believe this, but I have another theory on it as well that I believe most women experience in relationships. And it's that their whole life begins to revolve around their partner where they stop leveling up their life. They start having their own full and complete identity. This is what I'm going to help you work to reverse in this video. Whether you are in a relationship or you're not, this advice is going to be helpful for you. So let's go ahead and get started. So again, that point that I made that if you feel your whole life all of a sudden revolves around your man, and you start to feel this downgraded version of yourself. You just don't smell as good, you don't look as good. It is okay. It's completely normal to get so excited about your partner, to be so in love with them. And what happens here is you two exchange energy on such a high and strong level that you become one almost. And this is why you might start to feel that you're slipping into a version of yourself that is not the best. And this happens unconsciously. Most people do not know why or how or when this is happening, which is why these tips are gonna be so helpful for you. So number one, how to avoid the boyfriend air trap, how to bounce back and level up your life. Number one, you want to use what I call the rule of thirds. The rule of thirds is that one third of your energy you give to your partner. You give one third of your energy to your man, meaning your time and your actual energy. Another third, you give it to your family and your friends. And then the last remaining third, you give that energy to yourself. And what's going to happen here is that your partner is going to love that you are not giving him all of your time and attention. And I know that that sounds crazy. He might get upset. He might want more time from you. He's actually going to thank you. He's going to be so happy that you have such a full and complete life because this is what's going to happen. That polarity will happen in your relationship. My girls who have joined my Become Your Dream Woman and Master Your Feminine Energy course, you're going to understand this very, very well. So in a relationship, I need to set down my kombucha real quick. In a relationship, you might've heard me explain this, there's something known as polarity. This is when you're in your feminine energy, your man is in his masculine energy. You two are drawn together like that magnet, there's passion, romance, intimacy. When you have a full and complete life, you are in your feminine energy. And what also happens is your man gets to chase you. He gets to lean forward, pursue you, because you're not always available. This polarity is what keeps that love, that passion, it's what keeps that relationship strong. You really want to have that in your relationship. And using the rule of thirds allows you to do this. And it's because your man is always going to be discovering something new about you. You are getting to have that curiosity. You're getting to bring that mystery, that excitement to him. He doesn't get to be with you in every part of your life. Therefore, he's still in that pursuing masculine energy mode. And I can totally relate to you if you're feeling, this is so hard, I wanna spend all my time with my man. I felt this too. I love being with my man, I love spending time with him. But what I love even more is that polarity that we have 
have from having our own full and complete lives. I spend a third of my energy with him so that I can spend the remaining two thirds with parts of my life that are going to build me to be my best so that when I'm with him, he gets the most full, happy version of me. And the same goes for you too. Another part of this too is it's going to be hard to initially start this if you're used to giving your partner all of your time. So here's what you think. And this is what I personally use in my life. I thought to myself, okay, when I first got in this relationship, what my man loved about me was that full and complete life that I had. He found this so attractive. I'm not going to take this away from him. This alone helped me keep that rule of thirds in my life. Number two, this one's one of my favorites. You probably knew that this was coming. Also, by the way, if you see something moving around, it's my dog. You guys loved him in the last video, so I brought him back. Hi, bud. This is Oliver, guys, if you haven't met him before. You wanna go back to sleep, bud? <laughs> Just so you don't think, what is that moving around me? Okay, back to number two. So what you do to, again, become that hottest, happiest version of yourself, you get dressed up, every single day. And I'm going to explain why this is so important and how to do it. When you get dressed up every single day, you are living by my favorite motto, look good, feel good, do good. When you invest in yourself, you feel so confident and happy, you feel good and you emulate this beautiful feminine energy around you. You are so strong and magnetic because you are feeling good in your body. You are inspired to do better in your relationships, in your career, in everyday life. And what I notice that is so powerful comes from when I work with my clients. I'm a feminine energy coach and when my girls show up for the calls and they are fully dressed, they have their hair and makeup done, the calls are on another level. All of these creative and unique ideas just pour out of them. We get to deeper levels doing inner work together. They get inspired to make changes in their relationships or in their career with their finances. It is incredible the power that these girls have when they come fully at their best. Imagine you get to bring this confident, sexy, full-on feminine energy to your partner. Imagine how much more powerful that relationship could be. This is why it's so important to do this. And I hear a lot of people say it's too much work. It's way too much work to get dressed up every day. Okay, but it is even more work for you to go back and try to bounce back once you have completely let yourself go. Do the hard work now to really care and love for yourself so that you don't have to do even harder work later. Getting dressed up too. When I say dressed up, this looks different for everybody. Getting dressed up, it's not wearing dresses, doing a full face of makeup, if that is not what makes you feel good. When I say dressed up, it means your best. So for me, especially the days when I'm feeling tired or it's close to my period, my best is when I have clean, moisturized hair, when my skin is hydrated and healthy, when I am wearing sweats. That is my best on specific days. But you know what, I feel so good because I did my hair and my skin is looking good. Your best is going to look different on different days. Your best too, whatever your style is, you want to figure that out and maximize it. Life is too short to not be at your best. The clothes that are hanging in your closet that you're saving for a special occasion, today is a special occasion. Dress up every single day. I noticed in COVID when I first had to move back in with my family and I was so lazy, I was feeling so low, I was wearing sweats, I was letting my hair get so knotted up, not taking care of my skin. I treated my family members so poorly. Then I had a switch. I started doing inner work and healing more, leveling up. I started wearing cute satin pajamas. I started wearing silk robes. I treated my family members like gold. I treated them so different. It's because I felt different inside. When you are happy, you treat people differently. When you are dressed up and you're feeling good, you're going to treat your partner differently. Your partner, he deserves the best from you. You deserve the best from him. Never stop dressing up. And another point on this too is you might think, well, my partner should love me for me, or he doesn't care what I look like. Okay, he should love you for you. Yes, but do you love yourself enough to be your best? When you are not investing in your appearance, you're not getting dressed up, you are not fully loving yourself the best that you can be. So yes, your partner should love you no matter what, but are you actually loving yourself the best that you can be? 
And I think I covered everything there. Oh, I wanted to say too, I believe in this point so strongly that I literally created a clothing line out of it. During COVID, I realized, you know what? Women are sitting at home and they're not getting to feel sexy and powerful and feminine. So I created a loungewear brand. I have these gorgeous silk robes and pajamas to help empower women to be in their feminine energy and feel their best when they're just sitting at home. This is how strongly I believe in it. And I see in my customers when they order these gorgeous robes, they send me pictures, Alexis, I'm feeling like a goddess. Look at this that I'm wearing. Their energy is so different. It changes every part of your life, I'm telling you. So number two, put in effort to your appearance and dress up. I also have a video I posted recently called Why Looks Matter and How to Upgrade Your Appearance. I highly recommend checking that out if you have not already. Okay, the next point for how to bounce back and level up your life. And the reason that I say this to bounce back, a lot of girls that come to me for coaching, why they come is because they say, Alexis, I've lost part of myself. I used to be so confident and so strong and I knew exactly what I wanted. I was so creative and they feel that they've lost that spark. This video is for you if you feel that you've lost your spark. So back to number three, how you level up is you invest in your mind. I am a firm believer that knowledge is power and knowledge is confidence. Knowledge is the one thing that you always continue to level up higher and higher that you will never lose and it can never be taken from you. I'm also a firm believer that novelty equals happiness. I've talked about this in my previous videos, but there have been so many studies that have found a huge mental health decline in humans or in adults after they graduate from high school and college because they're no longer learning. Their mind is staying the same. When we are so youthful, when we're young, it's because we're learning, we're expanding our mind. For some reason, most adults stop doing this. So what I want you to do is invest in expanding your mind. And here's what this is going to look like. Oh, also to novelty being the key to happiness. Happy women are the most confident, the most beautiful, the most easy to love, and the most feminine. You want to be happy investing in your mind, having that novelty is how you get that. So these are some examples of how you're going to invest in your mind. Number one, pick a new topic to master. Some examples here, invest in learning a new language. Maybe you want to learn everything there is about feminine energy. Maybe you're so passionate about it. Maybe you do something like you take my course or you do coaching with me or you learn free content from all these people online, on YouTube and TikTok. Invest in growing your mind by picking a new topic that you are going to master. And if you watch my videos on confidence, you'll see I talk about this all the time. Mastering a new topic is the key to confidence. When you feel so skilled and you feel so confident in the knowledge you have just gained, that you have invested in learning, you feel that you have so much more value that you just added to your mind and added to your life. You carry yourself differently because of this. Another thing that you can do is start a new hobby. Personally, I love figure skating. Ice skating is my hobby. For you, it could be dancing or painting, something that's going to help challenge you, something that's going to make you grow. The next thing that you can do is invest in inner work. Inner work is so important if you want to be in your feminine energy. All that inner work is, is diving deep into your body, working on healing through old trauma, wounds, limiting beliefs, and unblocking anything that is holding you back from being the most powerful, high vibrational, divine feminine energy woman that you can be. Some examples of inner work include journaling. Just look up shadow prompts on Pinterest and figure out what you can journal and heal from. Do therapy, work with a coach, do meditation, read books. My inner work, everyone asks Alexis, how did you heal? How did you grow? How did you learn? It's from reading. And if you're a part of my course, don't forget to download that PDF where I give you every single book that I've ever read and every single book that I plan on still reading. That book list changed my life because I learned from people who had spent years gaining wisdom and they share it with me and I took advantage of that. I want you to do that. Find books that can work on expanding your mind. You can literally learn anything. We're so lucky to live in this generation. We have so much knowledge literally at our fingertips. Naturally too, when you do these things to invest in your mind that we've just discussed, you're going to go back to the rule of thirds. You're going to pull that energy off your man and give it back to yourself. And it is going to save your relationship and you are going to feel so good. All right, this is my last tip for you and then I will talk with you guys and take some questions. My next tip, you wanna set specific goals 
in these following areas. And something about goals too, if you don't have goals in your life, you are pretty much going for a drive without a destination. You're just cruising in life. You want goals to bring you back and have you actually elevate and level up in your life. So these are the goals that you're going to set. There's three areas. You're going to set one goal for each of these areas to accomplish in the next month. So the first area with health and fitness. Health and fitness, when you invest in your body, oh, it just changes your life. You feel so good. Your energy, your happiness is all different. So an example could be you want to sign up for a new Pilates studio and go to the gym four times a week. That's going to be your goal for the next month. Another goal that you could do is investing with your passion and your hobby. So maybe an example is you want to be a content creator. Maybe you're so passionate about cooking. Make it a goal to create content consistently and post five times a week. Make that your goal for the next month. And then the last area is with your finances. This is a huge misconception about feminine energy and I plan on talking more about this soon. How to handle money as a divine feminine energy woman. It is absolutely okay to attract and to hold money in your life. In fact, having money can help you be in your feminine energy even more. With your finances, set a goal to accomplish in the next month. An example could be maybe you open up a Roth IRA, maybe you open up a high yield savings account, you decide what that's going to be. With these goals, you want something to look forward to that's outside of your relationship. Because what happens if your relationship ends today? Do you still have a full and complete life or are you going to be devastated? These goals are going to help give you that full and complete life. And it will help you elevate your life and keep you motivated and disciplined. Here's what's so powerful about this. When you are motivated and disciplined by having these goals in your life, you bring that motivated, disciplined energy in your relationship. So for example, when you are sitting down with your boyfriend, you're not going to be eating greasy food. You're not going to be filling your body with all these unhealthy processed toxins because you have a goal of maybe losing five pounds or of being in the gym four times a week and you wanna feel good for that. Therefore, this idea of boyfriend air is not going to affect you. And it's because the boyfriend air that you blame your boyfriend or your husband for causing you acne and poor hygiene and greasy hair, it's not coming from him. It's coming from your decision to revolve your life around him, to conform to him. You want to keep your goals so that you can keep your full and complete life. It's your decision to stay grounded and focused and to truly feel and be your best. And this is how you do it. One more note before I take some of your questions. You want a relationship where both you and your partner are putting in effort. If you are not putting in effort for yourself, it is very unlikely you're going to put in effort with your relationship. You deserve to have a partner that does this for you, so you want to do this for them as well. I've loved, loved sharing these tips with you guys. Now let me take some of your questions. And if you are interested in taking my Become Your Dream Woman and Master Your Feminine Energy course, maybe you want to do this to level up your life, it is available at thefeminineglow.com and it's also in the description. I would love to have you as a part of the course. Also, if you join, you get to be a part of our private Facebook group with just us girls. It's a safe, uplifting, inspiring place to ask questions and to hold space for each other. So definitely don't forget to join that if you are part of the course. For private coaching, a lot of you have been DMing me about working with me one-on-one. -on -one. I wish I could work with every single one of you, but this is why I've made the course. I do not have space for any more coaching clients at the moment. There is a wait list on my website to sign up for when a spot does open up. It just depends on when my girls that I've been meeting with for weeks and weeks when they decide that they want to take a break. So that is all at thefeminineglow.com as well. Okay. Hello, everyone. Let's see. Oh, I love this question by Suga. Any tips on emitting lots of light feminine energy towards people? Yes, the way that you do this is to raise your vibration. By raise your vibration, what I mean here is everyone has a certain vibrational frequency and it's the level of energy that you're giving off, either low, medium, or high. When you have a high vibration, you are able to send good, positive feelings towards other people. This is how you get in your light feminine energy. And in order to be in a high vibrational state, you have to do things that feel good for your body. Nourishing your body with healthy, nutritious foods, working out, spending time with positive, uplifting people, doing something that nourishes your soul, like dancing or painting, excuse me, 
These are all things that can help you have that higher vibrational state and be in your light feminine energy. Great question. Let's see. Ooh, Diana, how would you explain that a woman who is in her feminine energy hasn't met her man yet? I would explain it by saying that there are other things in her life that she is having the opportunity to focus on so that when that man comes, her life is so full and complete that it's just the cherry on top. And maybe that there is a mission, there is a goal that she is supposed to accomplish before being in a relationship. A lot of people ask, well, I'm in my feminine energy, I haven't attracted that partner yet. Okay, maybe there's something that you're still needing to heal from. Maybe there is an area of growth that you need to have so that when that partner comes in your life, you are able to actually stay in that relationship and actually hold the space for that man. So that's another thing too. If you're in your feminine energy, you won't be worried about when this man is going to come because you've released control. Feminine energy, it's about flowing, it's about being present and being so excited and curious. So that's definitely a great question. But I would explain and say it's not the time yet and be so excited because it will be coming soon. Such a cutie. Thank you, Julie. Danielle, team oatmeal or team grits? Oh, Danielle, honestly, I'm not a fan of either, girl. I used to love oatmeal, but for some reason, I just, I don't love it anymore. What I do love for breakfast, I love things such as acai bowls. That is my absolute favorite. I love avocado toast with eggs. I really, really love making smoothies, but I'm not an oatmeal. Never, ever been a grits girl. You're the best. Thank you, Diana. Lovely smile. Thank you. How do I feel not jealous about my boyfriend's coworker who is a little too friendly with him? Sandra. Okay, girl, great question. So if there is a girl who's a little too friendly with their boyfriend, it's absolutely okay to not be comfortable with that. And what I would do if I were you is have a conversation with your boyfriend and see if there are any boundaries that could be set with this girl. Because what happens a lot of times too is if a girl is, oops, I'm sorry guys, my dog's going crazy. If a girl is a little too friendly with your man, it could be because he's not setting the proper boundaries. So it's okay to have a conversation and let him know what those could be or what could be done differently. And I would also focus on pulling your energy and attention off of this situation, getting to your best that you can be so that you feel so confident, magnetic, and attractive. This is what's going to pull your boyfriend into you. This other girl's not even going to be an issue. There's no time that you're spending on her and your boyfriend is not even seeing her because you are so full and complete and happy with your life that you are not even giving any room for her to matter in your relationship? That's a great question. Discipline is better than motivation. Jay, I actually do agree with this. I believe discipline is better than motivation, for sure, because motivation, it's based on an emotion. It doesn't always last. Discipline, it does last. You can have it at any time. Let's see. Ooh, can you forgive a man that betrayed you, but you have kids together and love him? So that is a great question, and it's really, really hard to answer that on a live stream. I'd love to talk with you one-on-one. -on -one. But what I recommend you to do is get into a meditative state, drop down into your body, and really feel if this act of betrayal is something that you can live with, or if it's something that is just too hurtful, you cannot move forward with this person. The answer is going to look different for everybody, but your body will know the answer to this. Ooh, Elena, I love your question, girl. So how can I tap into my feminine energy in my business if I'm usually operating in my masculine? Yes, and I actually just posted or filmed a TikTok video for this. So if you are in, if you are an entrepreneur or you're a business owner, I can heavily relate to you. I own two businesses, so I'm in my masculine energy a lot. This is a great thing to have masculine energy when it comes to work. What you want to do though, is make sure that you are having a routine that can take you from work mode to what I call play mode. This is something that's going to help you connect back to that inner child, that feminine energy side of yourself. So this could be something such as dancing or it could be painting, 
or it could be going for a walk, going for a run, have an activity that when it's time for work to be over, you do this activity to shift you into that feminine energy state. Because what will happen is we've been hustling, we've been working all day, that our body is used to this. And we wanna carry this into our relationships, into the relaxing evening. You wanna put a stop to that and say, nope, time for me to get into my feminine energy. So this is a tip for you to do. And also too, you want to make time to prioritize meditating and being in your body. What this is going to do is open up the creative pathways that your feminine energy is guiding you towards. For example, with my business, I knew I wanted to be an entrepreneur when I was opening up my clothing line, but I didn't know what exactly I wanted to do. I needed to be in my body. I needed to discover my passions and my purpose so that it could guide me in my business, so that I could use that masculine energy to carry out that business. And what that means is I decided, okay, I know that I want to help empower women. I know that I want to help women feel sexy and confident and beautiful. What can I do on the entrepreneurship side that can help bring this vision to a reality? I also know that I love passion or I love fashion so do you see how I was giving myself time to connect to my passions time for my creative juices to flow so that I could open up these ideas for what I wanted to do then my masculine energy carried it out turn it into a business so this is how you want to balance your feminine and masculine energy if you own a business I know that's a long answer but I get so passionate about female entrepreneurs I really really respect you girl and I wish you the best with your business Oh, Rosie, thank you so much for the gift, girl. That's so sweet. Mm. Kiara, how can I step back and not be constantly worried about controlling everything in my relationship? Kiara, great question, girl. And to save some time here, I'm going to recommend you watch my video that I just posted, How to Activate Feminine Energy by Releasing Control. And it's recent on my YouTube channel. That explains everything that you just asked. I think it could help you. So, how do you become a better version of yourself when you're married and codependent? Yes, so all of these tips that I just shared with you to help you bounce back and level up your life. In addition to this, I recommend that you invest in inner work specifically to heal codependency. There's a book that I love called Codependent No More. There's another book that also might help you called Attached. I can't believe I almost blanked out on that. That's one of my favorite books. Attached, it's by Dr. Henry Cloud. These books can help ground you back into yourself, help heal some of those codependent tendencies. Maybe you get to work with a therapist. Learn to heal from any trauma and wounds in the past that are causing you to be codependent now. Because as I mentioned, when you pull that energy off your partner, you give it back to yourself, he's going to come chasing. He's going to love that you are in your feminine energy and you're going to feel better. The relationship will thrive as a result. All right. Can you speak on getting into your feminine energy after a breakup? Yes, this is a good question. So after you go through a breakup, what I would recommend you do is number one, give yourself time to grieve. Give yourself time to feel the emotions and to let them out. Otherwise, they're just going to need to come out later. Excuse me, it's like ripping off a band-aid. Rip off that band-aid, you give yourself time to cry or you journal or you do therapy. Be with your body, allow any emotions to express itself. This is going to massively speed up your healing process. And to be in your feminine energy, I believe you have to do inner work. You have to do healing to remove the trauma, to remove the limiting beliefs in the blocks and really access your highest self. The next step that I would take, so you're gonna wanna heal and grieve and let out your emotions, the next step that you're going to take, find something to begin investing your time in. And one of the best things that you can do is work on either building a business or create new friendships or travel more. Find something that's going to elevate your life in some way and fill up your time. When your time is so filled up, you don't have time to be sitting around, checking your ex's social media, wondering what they're doing. Your life is being built again. Your energy is being cut and disconnected from him and poured back onto you. This is what you want to do after a breakup. And be easy on yourself too. Breakups are painful. I heard someone say once that your body processes a breakup the same, or a heartbreak, the same way that it processes a broken bone. So know that your body is going to need time to heal and give it that time to heal. Okay, how do you master detachment? Oh, this is such a great question to end the live stream. So how do you master detachment? The best thing that I can tell you is to learn that nothing in this world is truly yours. 
that you are borrowing every relationship, every experience, every opportunity, and to treat each one as such a special gift that you are so blessed to receive. So for example, when you are in a relationship, that person does not belong to you. And if that relationship ends, you understand, okay, this is just a chapter of my life. There is a better purpose for me. There is a better purpose for this person. That is how you master detachment. Nothing really belongs to you. Nobody belongs to you. In addition to this, everything that I mentioned about having your own full and complete life, you want to make this a priority because when all of your energy is on your partner, when something goes wrong with your partner, your whole life is disrupted. You want to have your energy balanced in different parts of your life so that when one goes wrong, you are able to detach and focus on the other areas. Really great question. Okay, my girls, I've loved talking with you today. Thank you for bringing all of your energy, all of your great questions. Let me know any video ideas that you have. I'm so excited to see you in the next video. Hope you have a great rest of your day. Bye.